everyone. My name is Astrid Reeves, and thank you for joining me in my studio today. So today, <laughs> guess what? I'm trying something new. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, um, uh, from a previous painting, I had some leftover paint, and I thought, oh, wouldn't that be cool? I wanted to try, okay, here we go. <laughs> I wanted to try something different, but this time, with the same combination. Like I, I used uh, this combination of colors in a flip cup painting and then I thought, well, I had a little bit of leftover paint. Let me just apply my breath art to it. And that way I could compare and contrast the two techniques and see how it uh, comes out differently. You know, okay, chalk it up to my science background. I have rather extensive scientific background with mm, I didn't really do research you know but I hung around enough researchers and uh, you learn about scientific technique um, in that kind of environment and so what you do is you hold everything the same and you just change one thing that's basically it right so that way you can compare and contrast and see what caused the difference there you have it you can save yourself 20 years actually uh, eight years of college. <laughs> right there, in a nutshell, scientific technique. Astrid has defined it for you. That's all it is. All right, so I'm applying that to this painting, and um, let's see how it turns out. Okay, so here I have a cute little uh, six by six inch wooden panel um, that I have sealed on both sides and gessoed, and I'm going to use, I'll, I'll link the painting that I used the flip cup technique on but basically that is yellow ochre oh my gosh I am in love with the creamy off-white color it just kind of looks like vanilla or something I don't know <laughs> I don't know what you call it but it's like the perfect creamy white color it's just yellow ochre um, mixed with white so there's that, that's gonna be the base color. Here is cobalt blue again. And then I've got my bronze. And here's the beautiful, that I've also fallen in love with. <laughs> I love color, <laughs> can you tell? This is uh, ultramarine blue mixed with burnt umber. So anyway, I'll list it all down below. Um, you don't have to be taking notes because I try to help you out. I'm a good note taker, anyway. <laughs> Eight years of college will make you an expert note taker, that is for sure. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put down the base color, which is this creamy off-white. Okay, so I haven't quite decided. Hmm. I think I'll just start putting something down and take it from there. Well, that's kind of interesting. It looks pretty. Love those colors. You know, the interesting thing is that with this pouring medium, it doesn't, this is Lucas Krill pouring medium. <laughs> I think I might just make a bunch of dots. I don't know. It doesn't really thin out very well. So let me see if I can just get it to blow around a little bit. Interesting. It definitely blows out differently. Wow, that's cool. Wow, they're like layers of cells. I think, okay, let me try. I'm kind of watching to see what it's doing. 
but it, there are layers of cells in here. So there's like the cream, and then there's the blue, and then there's the bronze. I'm gonna try. Here I go, changing horses midstream again. <laughs> All right, I have an idea. Let's see how this works out. definitely created a different effect so here was individual dots that I just blew out and they have their own little color patch basically and then here I layered them and it you know did even more complex colors which I could do over here I could put some of the dark blue In here there we go and then maybe some bronze oh, yeah, I want to do the white first well cream and then some bronze have back to my style with the breath art and the uh, outlines that I like to create you know the lights and the darks very cool definitely have to say with the Lucas Krill pouring medium it creates very delicate webbing and cells and things like that all right good well I'm gonna leave it at that I might play with it a little bit but not much because I like the colors I like the different effects that I created on the different sides, you know, so create some interest. And um, yeah, but I like this to stay calm and peaceful. Well, let me know what you think of these colors, the design, the technique, or if you just like it or not, whichever. You don't have to get all technical about it. That's Leave that up to me. <laughs> all right, yeah, stay tuned for the drag painting. Ah oh, man, this did not dry how I wanted it to. Uh, it, well, the paint was too thick and uh, I'm surprised actually because it's so humid, but uh, it really does have something to do with how thick the paint is as well. So you can see the huge cracks in the paint. I also used a different pouring medium. I used, uh, I used a uh, Lucas Krill pouring medium mixed with Holbein paints. So I noticed that as it was drying, it was kind of pulling away from the edges and kind of contracting. That's like the best way I could describe it. So that should have been a sign to me right there that I was in for a problem. But there is something called Kintsugi, which is the Japanese art of, um, like celebrating imperfections, right? So these imperfections called crazing, let me go in a little bit, you can see, so can be highlighted and I'm gonna do something fun. Uh, Kintsugi is definitely, well Kintsugi originally is the, like truly is the art of enhancing imperfections specifically when it comes to fixing pottery and so you glue the pieces of pottery together with gold dust mixed with the glue and so then you have these gold cracks in there and I was like wow what a neat idea right so I'm going to enhance these cracks with bronze obviously this is not pottery and I'm not using gold. So it's, you know, it's the application of the technique. It's certainly Kintsugi inspired. So stay tuned for the Kintsugi technique applied to this little painting. So that's what I did. And 
I just used the colors of the paint that I had left over to fill in the cracks and apply the principle of Kintsugi to my painting. I love Japanese style paintings and this is really fun for me. Hope you had fun too and I will show you when it's dry. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I want to give you a close up of the changes that I've made so far with the Kintsugi um, effect and the technique, but I can see that uh, I didn't realize that by using the pouring medium mixture, it was going to sink into the cracks too much. So I want it to fill it up some more. Yeah, that's better. That's actually better. Yeah. I mean, some of these I think I might leave. I'm just gonna play with it and, uh, well, that's pretty. Okay, great. Well, I'm just gonna let this dry. And those are the final touches that I'm putting on this painting. And let's see if I can, oh, do it more that way. But anyway, I could, here, I'll give you a close up. See, isn't that cool? So I'm gonna see how this dries and, and then basically call it a done. Okay guys, so here it is. I applied a little bit more bronze paint to the cracks and it dried just beautifully. Let's see if I can get some close-ups here. And I realized if I go, there we go. Now you can see the beautiful shimmer to the bronze and the blue and the different colors that I put in the cracks in addition to the bronze. And I think it came out really cool looking. What do you guys think? Please leave your comments down below and I'd love to hear your feedback on this one. This is a little bit different. Uh, doing the Japanese Kintsugi effect on my painting. Emphasizing those cracks, applying it to a painting. I think that was really fun. So thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me in my studio today and I'll see you next time. Bye.